Hi! It's been a month <laughs> since I put out that first video, which is so crazy. It opened up some really cool conversations and it made me realize just how much I love having fun with a camera. It's already 2021. Uh, the month of December kind of just slipped out of my fingers. <laughs> my sister and I did Vlogmas. Yes, we did manage to get 25 videos every single day from December 1st to December 25th. It was nuts. You guys are here for the Q&A, so we're gonna do that. I did save the answers from one month ago when I asked this on Instagram. Okay, in no particular order, how old are you? I am 25 years old. Favorite musical show event service set you've ever played? Oh, I know. Student Ministries New Year's Bash. So much fun. Nat would put together this like Hillsong Young and Free style like set and we would go all out. I would actually train by singing and running on a treadmill so that way I'd be able to run and jump and sing on the actual day. How would you describe your aesthetic? I don't know. I think I'm pretty simple. Color scheme wise, I like black. I like neutrals. It kind of just works. Favorite and least favorite Filipino idiosyncrasies. I'm half Filipino, half Chinese. I was born in Canada. I am probably the farthest thing from a Filipino. <laughs> Even farther from being Chinese, I will say. Idiosyncrasies means things that stand out, things that are different, right? This is definitely not isolated to Filipinos, but my favorite thing, I guess just their hospitality and their warmth. It's just crazy how you walk into a Filipino home and you are immediately treated like your family. Like you are like hyper welcomed. Least favorite though? I'd like to think I've gotten better at this, but Filipinos are just known for being late all the time. That's just so unfortunate. When you were abstaining from social media, did you use WhatsApp? I got rid of Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. I kept WhatsApp, which I never really thought of as social media because it was just a means for me to communicate with my family. What do you do on your Sabbath day and what is your Sabbath routine? Once a week, I'll dedicate a day to resting. That will look like sleeping as much as I need to, spending time in the word and my quiet time without a time constraint, eating whatever I wanna eat, working out if I wanna work out. It's kind of like a day of just listening to what my body and what my mind and what my spirit needs. If I am feeling creative, I'll film a video or I'll play guitar and make music. Pre-COVID, I would love to go out and sit at a cafe, read, write, it's just a day of doing whatever's life-giving to you and not forcing yourself to do more than that. I think that's really important because Sabbath is supposed to be a day of remembering who God is, taking time in prayer and in worship, but just enjoying his creation and enjoying the life that he gives you. I think those are really crucial things. I hope that answers the question. I will say though, I do like to plan my Sabbath days. There is something about good stewardship in planning out what you do wanna do on a Sabbath so that way you use it well. What motivates you to intentionally rest instead of being a potato? <laughs> there are days where I really don't feel motivated. Sometimes that can turn into this state of kind of being numb and overwhelmed and tired and just blah kind of existing in this weird space of discomfort when you could be resting in a really life-giving refreshing way i think what motivates me to get from that place of potato to like french fries and hash browns and like a really good thing. I think it's knowing that it feels good to be here. So if I ever feel myself getting to that point, I will often stop and pray about it and be like, I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna go here. I know that being here is so much better and I will feel better and the repercussions will be so much more positive. What really helps me get there like more practically having in mind the things that bring you joy, that refresh you, that revive you. Just knowing what those are and then deciding in that moment, oh, I'm gonna do that one thing on that list because I know it'll get me there. Yeah, wow. This is kind of hard to articulate because I haven't before. Also, it's getting dark. Oh. As I was <laughs> setting up to keep filming, my friends came by and gave me Popeyes. 
Thank you. So I'm gonna eat while we finish answering these questions. Do I remember where we left off? Not at all. <laughs> You guys know what plant this is? It's called a prayer plant because I'm gonna mess this up. I forgot if it's like in daylight, it like goes down like this, but at night it goes up like this. Worship's dancing, different ways, prayer plant. How do you stay satisfied with God? Doesn't it get tiring to have him on the forefront of your mind? I think it comes down to preaching the gospel to myself every day. I think it's really important to remember that Jesus is your personal savior. Like he rescued you out of your sin and your brokenness. When you remind yourself like, well, why does the gospel actually mean something to me? Then you remember, oh yeah, only he fully knows and fully loves me. And that is what my soul longs for. Like, wow, God, thank you for meeting me in that way where I am. So when you like walk yourself through the story of the gospel, you can't help but be like, wow, like so in awe that changes your perspective. So rather than following Jesus and feeling burdensome or tiresome, when you remember that he's actually the one that sets you free and gives you life, it becomes a joy. And that helps me to be satisfied in him. Even when times are hard, I know that he is my protector. He is my refuge and my strength. And suddenly everything in the world that I think will satisfy me just pales in comparison kind of a long answer, but it's my real answer. <sighs> Delicious. <laughs> okay, that's enough. <laughs> Who's your favorite, Acorn or Ollie? They are both my favorites. If you could go to space with Acorn or Ollie, who would you pick? There would be no bunnies to pick from because I would never go to space. If Ollie ate Acorn, what would you do? If Acorn chewed your guitar cable, what would you do? I would look at her and sigh because I would know that it's ultimately my fault for being an irresponsible human being, for leaving my things around where she can chew it. If Ollie and Acorn were Disney princesses, who would they be? Oh, that one's easy. Acorn would be Anna. Yeah, color-wise they match and so does Elsa and Ollie. The personality is like freakishly the same too. Anna and Acorn are both adventurous and curious, whereas Elsa and Ollie are more reserved. I think Ollie also is really misunderstood. Wow, that actually makes a lot more sense than I realized. All right, last one. Encouragement for creatives who want to put themselves out there but haven't yet. Just do it. <laughs> Like seriously, please just do it. Why not? Like you're the only one stopping yourself from doing it. I think if there's something that you're good at and that you really love, sharing that with people is like the greatest gift. How is this chicken so tender? It's crazy. Okay, we're gonna wrap up this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for taking the time to get to know me a little bit and asking questions. I'm gonna eat the rest of this Popeyes and pray that this footage looks all right. And if it doesn't, it's fine because I've been here for far too long. <laughs> for reals though, stay safe and God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs>